going to go ahead and get started. So hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our last session of marketing promotion um, in our peer-to-peer -peer summer series with New Bedford Creative. For those of you who may or may not know, I'm Jasmine Baird. I'm the Senior Creative Fellow with New Bedford Creative. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. So before I get into um, our overview, I wanted to make a brief um, exciting announcement that New Bedford has been chosen to be a place-based pilot for an initiative called Creating Connection. It is a nationwide program that's run by Arts Midwest, and we will be hosting them for a webinar this Friday, October 1st. Um, Margo will go ahead and drop that link in the chat so you guys can register for free. Um, this Creating Connection is a messaging framework for how to communicate out to your audiences and to build more audiences. And the whole concept is how arts, culture, and creativity is a part of everyday life. So um, again, that's happening this Friday, October 1st. And again, the link is in the chat to register. So today's series, I'm um, sorry, today's session of our peer-to-peer -peer series um, is geared to enrich, educate, and connect creatives within our community. Um, we know that New Bedford is home to many artists, creatives, entrepreneurs, et cetera. And so we wanted this series to embrace the pulse that makes New Bedford so unique, while also expanding our knowledge and our connections. Um, we wouldn't have been able to do this without our funders, Mass Development, TDI, and the Bar Foundation. So thank them both for funding this program. This is just one component of a broader TDI Creative Cities initiative to boost arts-based economic development. So before I introduce Lindsay, um, I just want to briefly go over the format of today's session. Um, once I'm done, I'll pass it over to Lindsay, who will present for 15 to 20 minutes. During that time, please feel free to add your questions to the chat, whether um, it's about her presentation or any questions that are tailored to specific projects that you're working on, just so that you can get the best use of this time. So once Lindsay's done, we'll have 25 minutes of Q&A and then hope to wrap up by 2 p.m. Um, this session is recording now, so I do ask that you all stay muted throughout the presentation. Um, and once we open the Q&A, we'll stop the recording and you all are welcome to come off of mute and join the conversation. Um, and all of these sessions throughout the series have been recorded and are stored on our YouTube at New Bedford Creative. So you'll have access to this recording within the following week. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker of this afternoon, Lindsay Meesh. Um, Executive Director of DATMA, who will present to us about marketing promotion, but more specifically about collaborative media resources. So I'm going to pass it over to her to give us more details about who she is, what she does, and what she'll present for us today. So Lindsay, it's all you. Okay, great. And you can hear me all right? Yes. Okay, I see the nods all around. Uh, well, thanks, um, thanks, Jasmine and Margo, and of course TDI and Bar and Mastev uh, for having me and for hosting this amazing series. Um, some of you know me as uh, a metalsmith and an artist. Uh, some of you guys know me as a Craft Boston director, and most of you know me as director of uh, Massachusetts Design Art Technology Institute. Um, and we present public art and happen to collaborate. Uh, it's part of our mission to work with other organizations and artists and, um, uh, you know, working together and trying to kind of, um, you know, get everybody on the same page all the time is a full-time job. Um, and I learned that pretty much in all of my roles. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, toolkits today, uh, specifically on marketing. And it seems like, um, you know, if you can find the time, kind of chisel out the time to create toolkits like this, then it actually saves you a lot of time later and then helps um, to create a, like a unified marketing um, tone or voice. Um, and also it's just like any time that you have the opportunity to work together with another person, it makes your project better. Um, as someone who is very type A, you know, if you met me before, you are nodding and smiling. Um, I, I have to say, I love being able to handle everything and do it all myself, but in actuality, it does come together better when you like have a team of people and you always have something, you know, better for it. So, um, now to dive into it, um, again, uh, I started to make toolkits because when I was an artist or when I was um, an administrator at Craft Boston, which um, is a show up in Boston that uh, works with hundreds of different artists from all over the country. 
and everybody is coming in and trying to sell their artwork for one weekend to um, a massive audience in a convention center. And, um, you know, the last thing that you have time to do is spend effort and time on marketing because as an artist, um, and I think that this is pretty universal if you're a producer or uh, any sort of um, field, uh, you're you're making what you used to make as a, as a sale item, you're making what you're making now, you are trying to think of what you're gonna make next and it's impossible to try to stay on top of things like websites and whatnot. Um, and so I think that the, more that you can try to be aware of any sort of universal marketing voice that helps you and your sales. Um, I did notice that when I was, um, you know, helping artists make sales in a weekend that, you know, is an investment for an artist and time and energy and money, uh, that when they spent time and followed these toolkit, like general tools that I would make for them, um, they did better with sales. And um, they created awareness and then they started to create a following and audience. And I think that that is one of the reasons that it was so important for me when I took over the role as a director at DATMA, um, that when I was going to be working with all of these different um, producers, because if you know, you're know you a museum or a gallery or an artist and you're working with me and putting on a show, you're producing something. So when I'm working with all these different producers, I realized that same toolkit could work in the same way that I um, had worked with all of these individual artists. I, I just kind of switched it and, and made, um, made the toolkit for these uh, collaborative partners. And um, it's not easy work, but uh, to take the time and chisel the time to make something like this, um, in a way, in the end, it makes me more motivated and, and want to become even more part of our community because I think New Bedford's uh, collaborative vibe is pretty intoxicating and makes you want to collaborate even more. Um, so this is something that I've found is great to bring to the table. Um, once I get started, uh, it's pretty much, I think you pretty much know all of the things that I that I strive to include in a toolkit, but it's just nice to like almost have a checklist. Um, and uh, like the, the point of the marketing toolkit is for efficiency, um, consistency, like a consistent message. Um, it's a tool, I use it as a tool, um, even throughout my production season, I like to just have the place that I go back to um, and pull things. It's, it's great for me to um, have a tool like this. So then if I have an intern or somebody helping me, then they kind of have the guidelines of what the messaging is. Um, it's great to have clarity. So you've already taken up your, the, the theme of whatever you're doing and boiled it down to some really easy digestible, um, like phrases that you can use on Instagram and Twitter or Facebook or your website. Um, and then I just want to reiterate that it's, um, consistency and it's more efficient to have something like this. So just, uh, going back to that. Um, and, uh, let's see. So I mentioned that, uh, the benefits of unified voice, um, can happen through a few different ways. Like, um, but I think that web marketing and social media is awesome. And especially if you've listened to some of these peer to peer talks, uh, you know, that there's a lot that you can do for free. Um, and so it saves a lot of institutional dollars, or maybe you're an artist and it's coming out of your personal pocket. Uh, I, I am the first to admit that when you invest in something like a Facebook boost or something, it does help, but you can get a lot of traction with zero dollars, especially if you have a lot of voices helping you. Um, and the toolkits help you to control a narrative because you and your colleague are saying the same things. Um, and I don't have time to make Instagram posts throughout the summer. And I don't think that my partners do either. So I try to create pre-made posts for them or give them ideas or inspiration for their own posts. Um, you know, working in, in a collaborative way. Uh, I think the number one thing that I learned right off the bat is like, you can't make it about your own organization all the time. You have to remember that there's this bigger theme of things which makes people wanna collaborate with you. So ensuring, um, I don't, I, I think that people that spoke before me in this series can probably give you better advice about what to do on Instagram and what to do on Twitter and Facebook and your website or your press release. But um, just, you know, time and time again, when you're working with another person, it's always really good to know like why they want to collaborate and what they want to get out of it. And often those are really great points that help with creating like that top headline of your media kit. 
Um, so uh, and just again, before I dive into my kit, I wanted to mention that, um, again, taking the time to create a place like a one sheet or a place on your website with a hidden link, um, it actually minimizes a lot of emails uh, and confusion. And I think that is awesome because we, God forbid, people do that reply all or they, you know, you get a thousand emails where you just didn't need, you didn't need one more in your inbox. Um, I just, you know, again, it's sending someone a link and having people direct to this um, communication page is pretty efficient. So I think I'm done selling it to you. And um, I'm going to just open up my website on, on datma.org and I'm going to show you a link that I've made for um, partners and um, uh, press resources. And I'm just going to kind of go through the website and uh, kind of talk about each point and, and why, why it's there. So I'm going to share my screen. So right now you're looking at a web page on Datma's website. Um, it's a really simple um, it's a really simple website. It's just datma.org slash media kit um, forward slash. So I try never to make anything more difficult than it needs to be. Um, I can be pretty wordy. So I, whenever I'm trying to be aware of it, I try to minimize language as much as possible. And I'm gonna try to make this a little bit bigger for y'all. So the way that the way that I have this web page divided up, it's just a little bit of an intro at the top. And then I have a um, section for news media, which has a link to my press release. Then I have another section for social media. And then the bottom section are some downloadable images. Um, image bugs, Datma's logo. Um, I find kind of hurts me a little bit when people show me some shared marketing materials and um, I see that they've gone to my website and they've taken like the logo that you see at the top corner here, the, the one with like the polka dots all over it because that's not our primary logo. So it's really important for me to make sure that I provide that um, for my partners. So then they can download whatever uh, file size that they need. And they can always make sure that when we're going into a conversation together with media, that um, the visuals, uh, I guess, cover the, the um, branding that I need to have covered. So whatever you know requirements that I have, I try to to make them minimal, but um, I do try to make sure that they are accessible. Again, I found that it's best to create this common language and this toolkit in a place called my website, but I've done the same thing by uh, creating this common one sheeter on a Word doc and then um, either input images and logos in the Word doc. It does minimize the size of the file. Uh, so then I will also attach them to an email so then they have them in the Word doc. And then also um, in like a JPEG attachment, um, because then you know that when you're communicating through whatever platform, the best image quality is being used. So I just, I try also at all times to keep everything together and um, in one email. So if I'm, for instance, don't have an opportunity to share a link like a, one on my website, because perhaps maybe you don't have one, um, Try to send, try to share your marketing tools all in one go, not in separate pieces, because uh, it just makes things less confusing and um, people will, you know, more likely use them. I think that, um, you know, what I've learned as far as having a website with a private page is that people use it more if there's not a password attached to it. Um, and, you know, it's just datma.org forward slash media kit. It, it, um, you only go to that if you know that that page exists for the most part. Um, you know, I don't think that there's, I'm, I'm not really that concerned if somebody can like travel to it through a Google search. Um, but I do try to just make things as easy as possible. So for this um, top part where I cover uh, what my what my event is about uh, for press releases, it's also for my partners too. So right now, our program theme is called Water 2020, 2021. And um, I know that my partners are looking for what my program is about. And also that program has a lot to do with their program too, if they're making something collaborative, like 
the drawing room have featured one of their artists who paints, um, who's a painter that often paints uh, it's, it landscapes with water in them. And uh, so for uh, Anthe, owner of the drawing room, to be able to talk about water, she went to this marketing page and then grabbed what Water 2021 was all about. And uh, for my, for, with among my marketing group, uh, we decided that it was even more important to like have that boilerplate phrase. Um, so then if she, uh, like, so one of my partners doesn't care about the dates or isn't looking for information about DATMA, um, they know that Water 2021 is from ocean waves to sound waves. A really small, just like summary, a few words as possible of what the show is all about. And then I have a link to a press release, as you see here on the page. Um, I will say, this is, I, we reach out to um, press contacts in a few different ways. Um, providing this website is one of the tools that we offer our press contacts. Um, if you had watched last week's see, uh, series with Steve, he gave you some incredible advice as to how you should submit press releases. I highly recommend you listen to every single word that he says. Um, I also include a link to this page. Uh, it's, no, I'm never sure what people prefer and how they're um, pulling information or what they see on their phone or what sends to their email. So um, I find that this is pretty reliable. So now I'm gonna kind of skip through this press page and, and uh, move to the next section about social media. And uh, for my organization, the three different platforms that we use um, are Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I try to keep all the social media uh, tools together in one section. Um, unlike Alyssa, I actually do like to participate in the hashtag movement. Um, I, I have not tested the hashtags for um, like bringing in more sales or marketing. But what I really like about it is that um, hashtags put you into like a digital filing system. And as somebody that puts like artists beautiful imagery out there, uh, I want that artist image to be part of that filing system. Um, so each season, uh, we have a lot of fun trying to figure out what filing system we're going to use. Uh, so this year we boiled it down to water 2021 from ocean waves to sound waves really long, um, but I still love it. And then uh, we also think that it's important to, again, find that universal voice, not just that works for DATMA and, and our program, but what's going on around us. Um, explore DMB, art DMB. Um, those are two hashtags that are recommended by um, uh, DMB Inc. And we've been using them since uh, we came out of the gate back in 2018. And, um, you know, we want to be part of when people want to learn about DMB. Um, we want to be have we want to have our images be part of that bigger picture. Um, so it's really important to kind of just figure out, you know, who uh, who your audiences are. And in a way, that's why when you see that there's a little section um, at the bottom of the screen here called accounts to tag. Um, of course, we tag our partners, we try to tag anybody, uh, and then this is again referencing back to the Instagram lessons from uh, earlier in the season. Uh, but what, in case you're a partner from, you know, we've worked with people like um, uh, Newport Restoration Foundation, and they're in Newport, Rhode Island, so they don't know about DNB Inc. or AHA New Bedford. Uh, of course, they know about Visit MA, or but they might not use Visit Southeast Mass and Destination New Bedford. And um, so these are all, I would say th those are all tourism websites that I think would give our posts more traction. And uh, they're partners of DATMA who have um, shown us over time that if we tag them, then they'll reshare our posts. And that's something that we mentioned here in the Instagram section is that you know, we're, we're trying to give people some recommendations of tools to use, like the, the hashtags, some of the language, but um, whenever anybody tags DATMA and it's about our program, uh, we will reshare it. And that's some of the incentive that we give to people who actually use the marketing tools. Like if you use our shared language, then we will mark it for you. And um, you know, some, some may think that that comes off as being a lot of work to then market for other people, but I don't have time to create a lot of content about DATMA all the time. 
And if my colleague is making a DATMA related um, program, then that is in a way about me. And also it's talking about their audience and having their audience look at what DATMA is doing and having DATMA's audience look at what they're doing. So we're like, you know, trying to kind of spread out our audience reach uh, one post at a time. So I think that um, like, I'm a big sharer. I think that there's a lot going for you if you do that. Um, and it's really been working for us, if anything. Um, now, again, I mentioned that, you know, artists or producers are all really busy and don't have time to create posts. So I try to create a couple posts for people to grab and share if they want to. These are all downloadable. And um, do they have that slogan? Um, they have some basic dates in them, but nothing that's too time specific. Um, our season is, is pretty much during the summer and early fall. So I try to make it so it's a, as timeless as possible. Um, and perhaps it, these posts give other people ideas for how they can incorporate uh, the, the season's branding, which is water branding, um, using their own images. Um, a couple of years ago, we worked with Superflat. And so this is an example that we created like a little fake example of um, Superflat using Datma's, uh, Datma's language and how to tag and things like that. Um, we create the same type of tools for Facebook, uh, though we make sure that we're using different sized imagery uh, because Facebook doesn't just stay within the square format um, because why would we ever wanna make anything easy? So, um, you know, and I try at all times whenever I'm introducing another uh, social media platform that I clarify what Datma's um, handle is. Uh, for, for instance, Facebook doesn't let you use um, like underscores and Datma has an underscore in its Twitter handle and in its um, Instagram handle. So I just clarify that for my partner at all times, not assuming that they're gonna do the work to tag me and find me. I just wanna make it as easy as possible and, and put whatever handles that I need them to use um, here on the toolkit, just like I did with the um, suggested accounts to tag above. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention about uh, whenever you're posting is that um, I try to have a consistent post uh, location. Um, I use these hashtags, but I also use the location finder and I always have it be um, downtown New Bedford. Even for like our partners in Newport, I ask them to make the location New Bedford, Massachusetts, assuming that it's relevant and they're not just like talking about themselves in Newport. Datma also uses a um, Twitter account. And uh, again, same thing with the hashtags. I provide our, um, our handle and that I, you know, I let people know that we will um, reshare any time that we are tagged. And then I have another section here. Here's my logos. And um, yeah, I try to give people a little bit of instruction uh, and then I don't have it written here, but a lot of times I ask that if you're going to you know, put our information on something or our, our um, branding, that you just double check it with me before it goes live and go and gets like to print or it gets published. So just um, a courtesy that if you're working with a bunch of people and you have their branding on something, it's nice to have them double check something. Uh, most of the time uh, it looks great and where people get it wrong is our really long name. And um, uh, that's understandable. Um, one, one fun tool that I found works, but probably doesn't get used as much, but I, I pretty much, I love it because it's so universal, is something called an image bug. Um, if you look at these images here, they have my, um, the program's branding on the corner, but it's on an image that is not a Dabma image. Immediately though, it kind of gives a consistency to the program where they're using the marketing branding. However, it's on their image that's relevant to them. And I think that's awesome because then we have more of a palette of images, especially if they're using the, um, the, the hashtags. And then these images are going into that, um, that filing system. Um, I also like hashtags because it's not necessarily like, you don't have to create a brand new account for something. Um, it automatically goes into that, um, that system without having to create like a whole new Instagram or something like that. Um, but I got my degrees in art, not in marketing. So these are just things that I like to do. Um, again, this, here's an image uh, that I'm, recommend, I'm allowing 
people to use if they want to promote our, org our uh, organization's programs. And they're really large because they might be used for print. Um, so I make sure that I always credit whoever the artist is, um, the name of the photo, and I don't put too many options out there, but you know, one from each program that we're doing. And I find that that is, that's enough. Um, but again, double checking spelling, if you're gonna uh, you know, use partners names on, um, on your marketing toolkit, it's really great to have maybe one of your partners double check the toolkit and make sure that the spelling is correct. Um, I've definitely misspelled Stokesbury and gotten um, the school of SMAS name incorrect, just like DATMA, they have a really long one. Um, but before I unshare my screen, I wanna again, kind of show you how I'm breaking down these tools and then um, talk a little bit about that, I, uh, you know, answer some questions. Um, but I just, I have this website that um, I, I'm constantly changing each season. Uh, this is the third year in a row that I've used um, a website as a, marketing toolkit landing page. Um, though the first time that I made it, it said like summer winds media tools in, in, in the website instead of just something basic like media toolkit. My first season, I also had um, my colleagues use the, the page, but they had to um, enter a password to get to it because I didn't want the, the outside world to get to be able to see it or something. But I don't think that there's so many people at this time in, in Datma's you know, career that um, everybody's trying to break down the door to steal stuff from our media kit. Um, when that starts to happen, maybe I will re-engage with a password, but right now just trying to take away as few hurdles for your partners um, to have to deal with, the, the better. Um, so I find that the tools that are most consistent are you know, making sure that I have a press release. So there's a press release link. Um, you know, how to reach my marketing staff, uh, and then some constant, consistent language for what we consider the, the most prominent media, um, social media outlets, you know, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and um, creating downloadable materials for each one of those, along with um, some consistent language and um, partners to tag. And hopefully this ends up in the long run uh, saving people time and helping you create your audience reach, um, make it a little bit bigger and um, bring draw new people to New Bedford and, and boost tourism and make it so we can all get some raises. So um, I think that that's pretty much um, my summary. Again, I don't think that it's anything that you don't already know how to do. But it's just great to just have that checklist of what works and keeping it simple. Um, perhaps I'm not keeping it simple enough. I'm always grooming my media page and trying to make it better for the next season. Um, sometimes I cringe and see what I wrote the year before. Um, but you just, you know, you have to put something out there. And, and um, like I said, it does save time in the long run. And um, uh, just, you know, hopefully, uh, again, does its job. Um, so I'm good with time and I don't see anything in the chat, probably because you're like, oh yeah, this is so easy. I'm going to go and make my own media kit right now. Um, cause it's just like so easy that I want to make my outline for it. And maybe you don't even have an event, but, uh, next you want to kind of prepare for that and just kind of make sure that you have your checklist. And, um, but I'd love, I, I mean, I pretty much work with all of you all the time. So if you have some advice for us on things that you found are helpful that are that are great tools or maybe things that are not so helpful, um, I'd love to hear about your own experiences now or another time. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, so yeah, we can open it up now uh, to any questions you guys may have. I have one. Um, so, you you say that this this is easy. I think this is easier said than done, but it well worth the, the effort to put that together. So I love how we can use your um, your website as a template. Um, can, so first question is, can you share that link with everyone here and hmm. uh, so that we can have ac get access? Yes. To because yes. I don't think all of us have that. 
And then um, did you base this on toolkits that you, you used in Boston? Mm. Um, I will have to give you the link. It's um, media-kit, so datma.org, media-kit. I think because I'm in a public speaking position, I may have been nervous and then closed the window. So it's going to take me like two minutes to bring it back up and share the link. So I apologize for that. Um, but it's datma.org forward slash media dash kit. Um, but yeah, I think back to when I was first creating artist toolkits and I do remember looking at um, this Boston based organization that was creating toolkits for artists. Um, and I loved their website and wanted, I, when I was working with Craft Boston, I almost started to just like recreate their, um, their organization's website on my own website. And then I was like, why am I doing this? And I just linked to them because um, it made it easier. And I'm, I, Margo, I know you know the organization that I'm talking about. And I think they even called it like toolkits for artists. Oh, um, maybe. So in follow-up, we will be able to possibly add the website, perhaps in the um, YouTube summary or something like that. I think that. that's um, ArtSake, Mass Cultural Council. Is it that was, it? Artist Toolkit? Perhaps, ten, were, if they were around 10 years ago, I remember they were one of the only people doing it, really taking the time to educate artists. And um, I just thought, why don't more people know about this? And then they would go to like Mass Mocha and have classes on it. And it was kind of like a moneymaker thing, but I was like, we should just have it free for everyone. So I would um, put it on the Craft Boston website again. And that organization at the time, they had it hidden. You had to enter into I'm like, you know, if an artist is coming to Society of Arts and Crafts because they want to learn something like, can we just have it be on the resource page? Because I think that even if they're not getting into the show, we want them to get into the show and here's ways that they can improve themselves. So just like, I don't know why people don't want to um, make sure that educational resources aren't always available and free and easy to find. Um, and again, that's why I, I love plugging that this series was very informative. Um, I, I, I highly recommend visiting this YouTube channel, um, especially because it's grant season and there are some really great grant talks and ways that you can organize your talks. Shoot, I love spreadsheets. So Dawn's talk was awesome because I get I, I went back to my own spreadsheets and I nerded out and, and ironed them out. And year after year, you know, this is our uh, Shelter 2022, Datman's next program season. That'll be our fourth year of using this media toolkit. And like I said, every time I go back and I groom it a little bit more and I take out my very wordy language and um, try to make sure that I plug in the personality of that program season and the um, collaborative voice that my partners and I have working together. Um, and, you know, it just gets better every time. So you're right, Margo. At first, it's a big giant jumble, um, but that's everything. So you just have to dive in and then figure out what works best for you. Though even, um, you know, uh, I curated a show um, called Adorn Spaces in uh, an organization that I worked worked with called Society of, of um, North American Goldsmiths, all these societies. I'm part of secret societies, if you didn't know. And um, so this, this show, uh, again, another type of craft Boston thing where people come together for one weekend and they have to make all this stuff happen. And you're also trying to market this thing called Adorned Spaces that nobody knows it's about. And I will say, just creating like just a few different tools for people and common language um, and maybe even going around and talking to your partners one-on-one -on -one and just taking the time like, hi, did you know that Lindsay Mish has an Instagram? Well, it's not just Lindsay Mish, it's underscore Lindsay Mish. Oh my God, I haven't been tagging you right, right? So like little things like that, that just like having it written down to show people, but then kind of having a face-to-face -face about it helps. Mm -hmm. um, and all of my tools that I've listed, those are all hard to use tools. I don't know why, but like, I have a hard time using Facebook. I have been using Facebook for like 20 years. Why every time I go on Facebook, is it hard? So sometimes it's really nice to talk to your partners and see where they're at, see what tools they use. Um, Science Cafe, 
an amazing partner. They don't have an Instagram or a Twitter or a, or a website. They just use Facebook. So when we work with Science Cafe, we know that um, you know Facebook is important for them and that that's where the um, partnership and, and the common the commonalities in the language need to be. Have you found that as an individual artist, are you using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? Do you have your own um, website? Like what, what is the, what have you found to be the most valuable? Um, I think that artists and uh, organizations should spend time making the art and producing the shows. I am kind of like anti-website at this time in my life and I am pro Instagram. Um, and for sales, I think that there are sale websites that you should use like Etsy or, um, uh, you know, everything I've, in my world is all craft based, but like, I don't, I recommend trying to use somebody else's tools as best as possible. So then that gives you the time to focus on making your, pro, your um, production stronger or you're making that next art piece is just too demanding in a lot of fields, but I, I know art and in this field, it is, it's hard to be the creator and the marketer and pay the bills and then go home and be a mom. So I just think eliminate all of that. And right now I don't see Instagram going anywhere anytime soon. And it's a great way to have, um, you know, in the arts, a visual. And if you have to um, use text, um, you can often put that in the visual um, or in your language and in, in, or in your um, bio. So uh, Alyssa hit it with um, her talk. She has two really great talks on stories and then posts. And I highly recommend listening to those. Um, so, but I, I, I think that um, creatives and even organizations, it's all about the Instagram. Great, that's, that's excellent. And I, I do want to reiterate too that what we're hearing is Instagram is where it's at as well. And it's also how, so this wasn't a peer-to-peer -peer session, but it was a co-creative session out of the co-creative center. Dina Hayden has been producing these other free sessions that everyone can take advantage of called the co-creative sessions. And one of the first ones was with a, a couple women who are consultants who place artwork in major institutions. So they curate for like major funders like hospitals and major corporations and they use Instagram and they search hashtags. So that I just want to reiterate that I think as the creative community, we still want to be using hashtags. You don't have to, I think Alyssa's point was that you don't have to go crazy using hashtags, but use the ones that are most relevant for your community and who you are. And well, they are so fun. Sometimes I'll write them, I'll be like, really bored and trying to find a hashtag and that's my hashtag and I think I'm like snickering because I'm like I wonder if anyone's gonna think this is funny it's the funniest hashtag and uh, it's I, I think that you can that can be a place where you can be playful um and you mentioned that there's this person exploring hashtags and hashtags go through all the different platforms which is another reason why we use them um you, you know they if you use a hashtag in Facebook or Instagram they, they all kind of go to the same place you see it all um, and another thing that um, what you said really inspired me to mention was that, um, you know, that that woman was looking for artwork with, oh, best-hashtag.com. That's funny. Um, I can't wait. So another um, reason that I use so many different social media platforms is because not everybody is a, um, uh, a lot of people are intimidated by Instagram. And uh, those people can often be non-creative or non, um, you know, the institutions like banks, which my dad, who is a mathematician, would say that you can be creative with numbers and that math is an art. So, but, you know, it's not traditionally um, an artistic category, right? Um, but I want to thank my sponsor. I want to thank my foundation. And they have a Twitter. So damn right, when two years ago, Bristol County Savings Bank didn't have an Instagram, um, I was definitely like on Twitter and probably one of the only one of their clients in this area, making sure that we were giving them shout outs on Twitter, which then they saw us and then maybe liked us a little extra than they did before, which I don't know how, what that level was, probably, I don't know, 
nothing, <laughs> but um, it made that person, whoever was in charge of their marketing, notice DATMA and then um, possibly be seen um, like at the company picnic or something. So it's just not everybody does use Instagram. So I think that it's important for an organization like mine to um, you know, make sure that you're hitting the, the platforms that, that other people use. Plus um, with Facebook, I, I'm like a granny when it comes to Facebook, but like my grandmother has a Facebook account and I want her to go to Craft Boston. So I need to make sure that I'm speaking there too. And I don't have the time to groom all of my posts, um, though I do think that there is a certain voice for each one of those um, social media platforms and that's another day. Um, but I do in my media toolkit, just make sure that um, you know, it's made that the point is there that we use those three, those three media platforms and that I want to prepare to use them should my partners also use Twitter. Cause I know that like destination New Bedford, the mayor has a Twitter account and I want to be like, Hey, keep funding the arts, Mayor Mitchell. Woo! Look at his awesome tourism boost here. So I'm like, Oh, thank you, Mayor Mitchell for all that you've done for the arts. Hint, hint. And so he sees it on Twitter because he likes our posts some, sometimes. Um, maybe he sees some more and then he doesn't always like them, but I, I know he sees our posts. But he doesn't see our Instagram because he doesn't have one. So that's all just, it takes the time. I think it takes more time trying to create something new every single time you're gonna post and let's just all help each other and just like, you know, make it as easy to collaborate as possible. And um, this is one thing that I bring to the table and I try to bring something to the table in a collaboration because everybody else seems to have so many awesome, really great ways that they want to collaborate and contribute. And I try to bring something. So you've, you've probably worked with me before in making a media kit, but I will try in the future to learn another tool to bring to the table. For now, this is what I can do. I also want to highlight Kim's comment in the chat. She mentioned it helps to put hashtags in Instagram search to see how often you use. If the number is really high, then you might want to find one with lower number might help being seen versus being a needle in the haystack. Great advice. Yes. Uh, when we're exploring the hashtags at the beginning of the season, we definitely see what, what's out there. Um, and uh, sometimes they're more successful than others, like from ocean waves to sound waves. Pretty sure no one uses that, but also pretty sure Datma is the only one that wants to take that much time to enter in that many letters. Um, the uh, summer winds, that was great um, and nothing offensive. Sometimes it's not necessarily about, uh, you know, how many people are using that hashtag, but maybe other connotations. Um, so it, do, it does pay off to do your research and um, see, see what that means. And, but thank you. Um, thanks for having me. Again, I thought we, we picked this day because it was just best timing because I had had a baby. So I was like, please, I'll speak the very end. Um, but actually, it was perfect because you got to kind of see how to um, create each one of these steps that I recommend putting all in one place. And then, you know, just like that, you get it done in a couple hours and share it with all of your friends and then they all use it and it's perfect. No, only like 25% of my partners actually use this toolkit, but that's better than like the 5% that when I first started used it. And so the more that you collaborate and I think I think that the tone overall between people and organizations is growing into a more collaborative one. Like I always say when I was at Craft Boston, like no one ever wanted to collaborate, but like 10 years ago, that wasn't as, as uh, like, it wasn't the thing to do and foundations weren't backing organizations that collaborated. So it just wasn't like the temperature. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why people collaborate more often these days. Um, but uh, I, I think that just the more often that you work with people and, and you're consistent and the more time that maybe I take and making my media toolkit easier to use, um, then it gets used more. Um, but hopefully this was helpful along with many of the other uh, episodes in this series that I found helpful as well. So can't wait to go back and watch the ones that I wasn't able to watch yet. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, thank you for your hard work on this and presenting for our session today. Um, very informative. Thank you all for joining us today also. 
Um, and lastly, thanks to Mass Development TDI and the Bar Foundation for making this possible. So um, like I said earlier in the session, you can find this recorded presentation in a week or so on our YouTube. So stay tuned for that. And Thank enjoy. you, Jasmine. I feel like, you know, a lot of this was you. You um, spearheaded these. And as somebody who went to almost all of them, uh, I'm going to miss these. I know. <laughs> I actually made these meetings. These are the, probably the first online events I've actually signed up for and actually made. I feel really proud of myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Fall River. <laughs> Shout out to Mama. Congratulations. Nice She's to see you. I know. I was, ah, she's alive. <laughs> You've got air. It's off. Well, we'll be at your events and I'll probably look the same, but maybe more haggard. Oh, oh I probably God. will too. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Enjoy your day, everyone. Thank you.